Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolo Tech. We're going to do a quick overview of the Droid Razor. The Droid Razor is the latest and pretty much flagship phone on Verizon as far as droids go and from Motorola. It's a really nice phone. It's a little bit of a design change from the current Droid Bionic, which is the kind of the flagship phone. This has dual 1.2 gigahertz processors in it. It also has a one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM along with this beautiful Super AMOLED display that's using QHD resolution which is 960 by 540 and it's just really nice. The front is Gorilla Glass, it's got a bevel around here. We've got our, our microphone down here, normal buttons across the bottom, menu, home, back, search. On the top we have a 720p forward-facing video camera. We've got our earphone here. On the top we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack micro USB and mini HDMI. On this side we have the on off sleep wake button. We have a volume up and down. On the back this is actually made of Kevlar and then we have a 1080p 8 megapixel camera with flash. We've got a speaker. We've got another microphone here for noise cancellation. On this side we have our SIM card door for 4G connectivity and then we have our 16 gigabyte micro SD card along with 16 gigabytes of internal storage. So it's quite an impressive phone from the feature set. Let's go ahead and turn it on and while we do that let's turn on the Droid Bionic at the same time since these are very similar phones. And let's just do a quick startup. But right away I'm not sure if you can see this on camera but this screen is just so much more vibrant being a Super AMOLED screen. You can kind of see how much of a difference there is thickness wise here. I don't know how easy that would be for you to see here. but There's definitely a thickness difference. This is a really nice 4G phone. There we go. Just waiting for them to boot up. I've been using the Razer for oh, a day and a half now uh, after I had it activated and it seems to be really nice. The 4.3 inch screen <clears throat> is a little bit large to hold in your hand regularly if you want to reach things across the screen. So you can see we're just about ready to go here. Slide to unlock. Let me do that again. The Bionic's still booting. There we go. So I just wanted to do a quick comparison, but if I turn this on, turn it off, does that kind of neat go to sleep, kind of like an old cathode ray tube television. And then we can slide to unlock this way, we can slide the camera that way, and we can turn it to vibrate this way. All sound off. Let's go ahead and open it up. Now I'm using the default background that it came with and the, the display is very responsive. This phone uh, is probably so far the fastest uh, Android phone I've used as far as touch, touch screen responsiveness that sort of thing. Uh, on the bottom we have our normal browser and all of those things built in. I added Pulse for a newsreader. We have Motorola's uh, latest version of their layover UI. You can go into the apps. You can see everything just seems to be so fluid in this in this phone. It's really fast and it's incredibly thin when, when I'm holding it in my hand. And a lot of you guys probably won't appreciate this, but I do have an iPhone 4 here just to show you thinness because the iPhone 4 is one of the thinner smartphones, but look at that next to it. It's very, very thin. And it feels solid. It's got to be, I think it's got aluminum with just this Kevlar backing to keep it light. There is no removable battery either, uh, just like an iPhone in that, in that respect. Uh, but overall, the phone is, is really nice, very nice and light. The Bionic's kind of heavier feeling. It may not actually be that much more heavy, but it, it feels heavier and bulkier in your hand. The Razer runs Android's 2.3 Gingerbread, and it has a really nice feel that Motorola put over the top of it with all the little apps they've included in this nice little UI they have. Everything's really fluid and fast. I used the Bionic for some time before as you may have seen the review and things just do not feel as fluid or fa as fast as they do on the, the Razer. The screen is nice and vibrant. It's really nice to look at. If I move over here they've added nice little details such as the Google search bar. You can see through it and see the details of the background through it. And it's just overall really nice and super fluid and fast. And that's one thing 
you really need in a, a modern smartphone to set it apart from the rest. If I go into the camera app, you know, there was one thing I showed the camera app on the Bionic and how laggy it is. If I go into here and take a picture, just let it refocus, snap the picture already. It's really pretty fast. It's much faster than the Bionic can take pictures. And it takes pretty nice pictures. You can see everything's nice and fluid. And one thing that Android lacks compared to, say, uh, iPhone or Windows Phone 7 is the, the touch screens just don't seem to be as responsive over time. And so far, the Razer's right up there with the best of them. So I don't know what they've done differently, uh, but compared to the Bionic and using that for a few days, this seems much, much faster. I'm still looking at battery life. Right now it's fully charged just because I charged it before this video, but I'm not really sure... Uh, overall how, how good the battery life will be and it does not have a removable battery as I said. Let's go into the browser. It's your standard browser. Uh, let's go to Zolotech and oh here's this nice little black keyboard they have. Black overlay on the keyboard. Let's go to Zolotech. Now I'm on Wi-Fi as well uh, but the browser is nice and fast. It loads really quickly and everything's scrollable right away. I mean this is just a really really fast phone. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more here for you. The browser is just really fast and fluid. We can pinch and zoom and it's it's as good as, as just about any other phone out there. Um, when we double tap to zoom it does kind of uh, do this little jerky thing where you see it sometimes. Eh, it's working fine now but what it does is it resizes the text but not the image which I which is fine because you can read it uh, but it it does have this little jerky feel to it occasionally but right now it's doing just fine so you can see how nice and quick it is it does have haptic feedback when I do this it, it shakes the phone a couple times real lightly uh, notifications are fast saying there's four updates and overall everything just is really really snappy and fast. As far as Android goes, uh, this is definitely the nicest phone I've used. It does feel large at times when you're holding it like this. You can't totally reach across it and for most people that's probably not going to be an issue but it's it's just super nice to use. If I go into menu here we can go into settings. You can see how fast everything is and it has some battery information. It's got some different in applications that Motorola has placed on here to help you stream information to your phone such as videos and pictures and things like that right off your home computer. If I go into the applications you can see here we have GoToMeeting that was pre-installed which is kind of neat uh, that we can use it like that. Uh, music, I've, I want to use this a little bit longer to see how good the music is through this. Uh, but over here comes with Quick Office pre-installed, Verizon Navigator, the usual. And it works really well. They have a task manager installed which is as analyzing applications. It's taking a moment here. And there we go. So it's showing applications. If I go back, Motorola and Verizon have also included Smart Actions. It's a little application that shows you how to do smart actions that can make tasks easier by automating things. And it's something they've included with this phone and show you. Uh, they show you right up front. So it says home, adjust device settings at home, you have a setting for work, workout, nighttime battery saver, battery extender, and I'm assuming they put some of these battery things in here because you don't have the removable battery. Uh, we have quiet location, sleep, so you can automate some of these things. So if we go to home, you can enter a location based on uh, where you are now, which I'm not going to do right now, but you can enter locations based on the GPS signal and where you're at and then it will switch when you're at work. You can switch it to that location and so it will know how to behave when you're doing those different tasks. If you're at work, set it to silent and you know whatever or ring the phone. It's up to you and you can set it that way. So overall the the Droid Razor is really an excellent phone. I didn't want to go too much in depth but overall it feels very sturdy, not plasticky. Um, this could be plastic but it, it sort of feels like aluminum and I would hope that it, it is aluminum based on the strength but maybe not I, I'm not gonna pull the phone apart to find out but overall it feels really well built and solid now, the only thing uh, that'll be interesting is when they come out with the laptop dock for this to see how much faster it might be than the Bionic is on its laptop dock and they've moved the ports so on the top here we have the Razor's ports on the side are the Bionic's ports 
and they keep doing that and I wish they'd make it more universal but we're making adapters so you can just use your pre-existing hardware with it uh, but overall it's fast everything seems super fast with it and it's really the latest and greatest of of Android phones at least from Verizon and Motorola I know there's some Samsung phones out there that are really nice like the Galaxy S2 things like that but if there's anything you want to see in the final review when I do that please go ahead and comment below and let me know what you what you want to see that you may not have seen in other reviews you're looking for and I'll try to cover those in the final review when I do that I'll also do some comparisons between the two I have a lot of people asking me should I get the Bionic or the Razer and so we'll do some comparisons on those as well but so far this is much faster feeling even though it's got uh, a minimal spec bump but it has a nicer screen as well but anyway if you haven't already please go ahead and hit subscribe and thanks for watching this is Aaron I'll see you next time